Hey guys, we're back over at our Beacon Hill project and pretty excited to show you guys what we have. We're currently punching this project out and the client's moving in. So we're just about complete here. Let's go take a look. So the last time we showed you this kitchen, there was cabinetry being installed and I don't even think that the stone was in yet, but now all of that is in and let's take a little bit of a tour through this finished space. So starting right behind me here, we have just a standard upper cabinet. Because we are close to the wall here with the hardware, we are accounting for the hardware projection in all of our fillers, but a lot of these hinges have a little bit of over travel. So we go ahead and make sure that we're stopping our doors. We're using restrictor clips to make sure that they stop just before 90 degrees so that our doors don't hit. There is a little bit of flex in these hinges, so we wanna make sure that we're accounting for that as well. Right below, we have our integrated dishwasher, fully panelized so that it blends right in with the rest of the kitchen. Under our cabinets, we're typically using a flush mounted LED light strip. And a lot of the times we're putting plug molds in the back of our cabinets. By code, we need to have outlets in the kitchen and we don't always want to see them in the backsplash. So in some instances like here, we went ahead and put them on the underside of the cabinet. I'm gonna turn these lights off to give you guys a better look at these outlets and lights. So as you can see here, we have our flush mounted LED light strip and plug mold in the back. And if you look at the cabinet above the sink, we don't have an outlet here. That's actually because it doesn't meet code. Here in Massachusetts, we can't have outlets that are above a certain height for safety reasons. A lot of appliances today have shorter cords that may not reach or might require some stretching, which could be a hazard for that appliance. So therefore having an outlet in the top is actually not to code and really not required in an application like this. You don't want to always be looking at those outlets, at least under a standard cabinet, they're pretty hidden. Another thing that we're putting into just about every one of our kitchens is a trash unit that's on a servo drive. So when you push the door of your trash unit, the servo drive kicks in and pushes that entire unit out. A lot of times if you're working in the sink or on the counter, you'll have your hands full. So to be able to bump that trash open, drop it right in is super handy. Another thing that was really important to this client about their kitchen and trash area is they wanted to make sure they actually had a built-in cutting board above the trash. When they're cutting up their food, they wanna be able to just drop the scraps right in the trash. Another great feature about this is when you do need to wash it, the cutting board just pops right out. You can bring it over to your sink, wash it, clean out any crumbs that may have fallen inside, pop that right back into place. As we continue through the kitchen, we have plenty of storage around the cooktop and the oven for things like your pots and pans and sheet goods. These are some wider drawers that are pretty deep that can hold a lot of these items. And as we come up a little higher, this is a really cool feature in this kitchen. These countertops actually go all the way through and under these two cabinets flanking the cooktop. We call these appliance garages. This allows you to keep things like your blender, within arm's reach, but kind of hidden away so that you're not always looking at it on your counter. We can just pull the blender right out. We have outlets right in the sides of our cabinet that we can plug those into. And when you're done, tuck it back away. You have all of your spices and additional pantry storage above. Everything's right where you need it. You'll notice on this side that we put the outlets on the sides of the cabinet. This is to allow for a little bit easier access for those appliances. And again, we were a bit too high to put an outlet up top here to satisfy code. And we didn't wanna see the outlets in the backsplash. So we tucked them off to the side where they're a little bit less noticeable. So when we're installing hoods, a lot of the times the ductwork that is behind these hoods is unsightly. And we don't really wanna be looking at that all the time, but it needs to be accessible so that we can service it if there's ever a need to in the future. So one of the things that we like to do is on the inside of our hood cabinets, is actually put this, put this panel here in the front that covers all of the internals Yes, it's not the most sightly thing to look at, but it's better than looking at all the HVAC equipment. And there's actually a shelf on the top here, so you can use it to store some overflow items or things that aren't gonna be used that often. We also like to use these Avento slips so that the door lifts up and stays wherever you choose to put it. It makes getting in there and accessing the unit much easier. And the hood itself is actually a pretty cool little unit. It's really sleek, minimal, and operates just by opening it up. And it is quite powerful for such a small unit. This is the lowest setting. And if we bump that up, you can really hear the difference in the fans. Again, we have another appliance garage here where you can store some additional appliances, get them when you need them and put them away when you don't. 
And one of the biggest questions we get is what to do with corner cabinets or corner units. Here's one of my favorite solutions for corner cabinets, and it's called the Le Mans. The way this works is they're kidney-shaped shelves that actually roll right out, giving you full access to all of your pots, pans, whatever you're storing in here. They tuck back away, taking full advantage of that extra space in the back of the cabinet. As we look around this kitchen, you're gonna notice something important is missing. There's no refrigerator, but actually there is. There's no full height refrigerator. Everything in here is all under counter refrigeration. So we have a refrigerator drawer here, another refrigerator drawer here, and this unit here actually doubles as a refrigerator and a freezer, so you can set the drawers to either. In this case, they have the top drawer set to the refrigerator and the bottom drawer is set to be the freezer. If they ever change their mind and they wanna add the additional space for the freezer, they can go ahead and change this top drawer over to a freezer. So one of the other great features about this kitchen is kind of continuing along on the appliance garage idea and putting a giant appliance garage slash pantry. One of the biggest differences about this space here is that it does have the power inside. So you can keep your coffee maker, your grinder, everything that you need right inside with the option to take these appliances out and use them a little bit more freely, tucking them back in when you're done. The bifold door here really helps to open this space up so you're not confined between two cabinets and you could even leave it open for regular use or if you are cooking and need to access this a lot, it doesn't get in the way. You don't have to walk around the door that might otherwise be in the way. Now let's swing on over to the island and talk about some of these features. As you can see, we have these steel legs that support the countertop overhang. And the intent here was to make sure that the steel was flush with the bottom side of the stone and flush with the floor. This means that the steel had to be recessed into the stone as well as the floor. And the reason for installing it flush in the floor was so that they could pull these stools around and slide them under the countertop without having that steel leg get in the way. In addition, we have some power strips running along each edge so you can easily plug in phones or tablets, anything that you may need. So right now the steel is only primed. We're actually going to be coming back here shortly and painting these steel legs as well as this column. So let's talk about this. This was an architectural piece of the building that we decided to incorporate into our design. So you can see here that the countertop is actually scribed all the way around this column. And we did the same with our cabinetry. We strategically placed our cabinetry back a little bit from these rivets so that we didn't need to scribe across each one on both sides. You'll also notice that the laundry is here in the kitchen. This is a two-in-one unit, so they can do both the washing and drying right here in the single unit without the need for two larger units, taking up a lot of space. We are in a smaller sized unit, so floor space is quite valuable here. And then additional door, drawer storage for silverware, pantry type goods, things of that nature. And over on the back, just some seating so that you can sit down and have dinner or just hang out with some company. So something that you guys saw in the shop and you saw a sneak peek of it on site visit. So this here is the day bed or the window bench. This was built to fit into this half octagonal shape here. And we actually pulled elements from both the kitchen and the dresser unit that we built for this space and kind of combine them all into one window bench. So some of the features that this cabinetry has is because we have the extra space here, the extra depth, we're able to make these drawers super deep. So this here is a 30 inch deep drawer. The two on the sides, I believe are 27 inches, but because we're following that octagonal shape, the actual outside slides had to be a little bit shorter, giving us an angled drawer to really help maximize that storage space. We wanted this piece to feel a little bit lighter, feel like it wasn't built into this space. So we ended up leaving this space on either side just to make it feel a little bit more separate from the walls to really make it feel like it was its own piece of furniture. We still have one more piece of furniture in this unit to show you guys, but that'll have to be in a future episode. We're buttoning up a few things on it right now. And I know in the last episode, I told you we were gonna show you the closet from our South Boston project. That one will be next week's episode. We had a little bit of scheduling conflict with a lot of the tradespeople in there buttoning up the unit so that we can turn it over to the homeowner. So we'll be sure to show you that one soon as well. And please, as always, drop us some comments, let us know your questions, and it can be related to this project, past projects. Thanks guys.